Gothic Tales of Terror. This collection of short stories contains several gothic tales to bear macabre and chilling witness. These tales are designed to unsettle you just a little as you sit back and take in their words as they lead you on a walk to places you'd perhaps rather not visit on your own. These stories are read for you by many readers, including Gisela Rowe and Richard Midgley. A Ghost Story by Mark Twain I took a large room far up Broadway in a huge old building whose upper stories had been wholly unoccupied for years until I came. The place had long been given up to dust and cobwebs, to solitude and silence. I seemed groping among the tombs and invading the privacy of the dead. That first night I climbed up to my quarters. For the first time in my life, a superstitious dread came over me. And as I turned a dark angle of the stairway, and an invisible cobweb swung its lazy wolf in my face and clung there, I shuddered as one who had encountered a phantom. I was glad enough when I reached my room and locked out the mold in the darkness. A cheery fire was burning in the grate, and I sat down before it with a comforting sense of relief. For two hours I sat there, thinking of bygone times, recalling old scenes and summoning half-forgotten faces out of the mists of the past, listening, in fancy, to voices that long ago grew silent for all time, and to once familiar songs that nobody sings now. As my reverie softened down to a sadder and sadder pathos, the shrieking of the winds outside softened to a wail. The angry beating of the rain against the panes diminished to a tranquil patter, and one by one the noises in the street subsided until the hurrying footsteps of the last belated straggler died away in the distance and left no sound behind. The fire had burned low, a sense of loneliness crept over me. I arose and undressed, moving on tiptoe about the room, doing stealthily what I had to do, as if I were environed by sleeping enemies whose slumbers it would be fatal to break. I covered up in bed and lay listening to the rain and wind and the faint creaking of distant shutters till they lulled me to sleep. I slept profoundly, but how long, I do not know. All at once, I found myself awake and filled with a shuddering expectancy. All was still, all but my own heart. I could hear it beat. Presently, the bedclothes began to slip away slowly toward the foot of the bed, as if someone were pulling them. I could not stir. I could not speak. Still the blanket slipped deliberately away till my breast was uncovered. Then, with a great effort, I seized them and drew them over my head. I waited, listened, waited. Once more that steady pull began, and once more I lay torpid, but a century of dragging seconds till my breast was naked again. At last I roused my energies and snatched the covers back to their place and held them with a strong grip. I waited. By and by I felt a faint tug and took a fresh grip. The tug strengthened to a steady strain. It grew stronger and stronger. My hole parted, and for the third time the blanket slipped away. I groaned. An answering groan came from the foot of the bed. Beaded drops of sweat stood upon my forehead. I was more dead than alive. Presently, I heard a heavy footstep in my room. The step of an elephant, it seemed to me. It was not like anything human. But it was moving from me. There was relief in that. I heard it approach the door, pass out without moving bolt or lock, and wander away among the dismal corridors, straining the floors and joists, till they creaked again as it passed, and then silence reigned once more. When my excitement had calmed, I said to myself, 
This is a dream, simply a hideous dream. And so I lay thinking it over until I convinced myself that it was a dream. And then a comforting laugh relaxed my lips, and I was happy again.